All right, I won't lie to you. I really like ChatGPT. I'm a nerd about it. It's an awesome tool and what's amazing is the fact that with its new 4.0 model, the applications seem to be endless and it just gets so smart that it just puts tools like Notion AI in the dust. Just like I put myself in the dust by not realizing my headphone was in the wrong way. Now, do I have weird shaped ears? Yes. Do I have a good idea in this video? Still yes. What I'm gonna do in this video is showcase a workflow to you that can transform the way you think about creating database structures inside of Notion. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is take a step back and think about what I do as a content creator. I create content for you on YouTube, but that does take some organization, that does take some time. In order for this to work for me, I'm gonna have to plan out how to create a database structure to create content efficiently. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask ChatGPT, I'm a aspiring content creator, who is interested in creating YouTube videos and podcast episodes, but I need help creating a database in Notion for my content calendar to keep everything organized and on track. So just saying that to this chat 4.0 talks about the step-by-step -step to create a new database. Then it talks about how you, you know, need to customize the database properties. And I'm noticing that it knows how Notion works. Like it really knows how it works because of all the context that it has from the large language model it's been working with and talks about the customizing database properties. Okay, now what I'm gonna tell it to do based on step two is this. Based on step two, can you please create a table for me with the name of the properties as the columns with the property type in parentheses and you'll notice, first of all, this is insanely quick. I'm using ChatGPT Plus, but I just noticed that it actually created this already without me needing to ask, which is nuts. So it had an example of a podcast episode, YouTube video, all this kind of stuff. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do here is press copy, and then I'm going to go into Notion, and I'm going to do slash page, and I'm going to say content calendar. And rather than using a built template, what I'm going to do is go to the table here, I'm gonna copy the table itself from this section. I'm gonna paste this table inside of Notion. And then you'll notice if I press the three dots, it's perfectly in here. So what I'm gonna do is turn it into a database. Wow. All right, so this is really cool. And here's a key thing to do next. This is really important. I know I asked for it to be in this row section here, so I'm gonna go and copy these and paste over the top row. So sorry about this, but you're gonna to wanna to do this. Then you're gonna hit options and click header row. Now press the three dots and click turn into a database. Now this is exactly what we need. We go in further here, press select, boom, turns it into it. Now let's delete the name of the property. Status, boom, turns it into the property. Publish date, let's change it to date. Perfectly turns it into a property. Now here you have the opportunity to choose between a text and a file or even a relation, right? So I'm gonna do just text for the remaining ones here. Tags, multi-select, so I'm gonna do multi-select. Boom, changes and converts it. Platform, select. Do we just keep going through this and you see how great this is? So then we do number. We know that 30 means minutes, so I can put minutes here for the name, remove the property types from the top as well, as you can see. Collaborators would be a people property. So then I would just person, remove it. Awesome. This is so cool. I just created a database with ChatGPT and all I had to do was change the property names. Now, if I wanted to, I can continue this process by saying, hey, you know what? I really want to make the script outline field a relation property to a scripts database. Can you please make a database structure for that scripts database while calling out the property types and creating a table with those properties and property types as the column header and then after this it's going to do the same thing but just create it for the script database so it's going to say it right here okay example scripts database perfect and then it actually gives me an updated calendar with relation which i find very nice so thank you for that so i'm going to go here paste this out remember put your header row turn this into a database after turning it into the header row then boom same thing here now with the content I don't agree. We're gonna just have the content be the page itself. So I'm gonna delete this. Status, totally fine. Let's move this to a select property and delete the select property. Last edited date, we're gonna actually just use the last edited time entity inside of Notion. 
and then we're going to use a multi-select for tags. Perfect. You'll notice even the commas change those into different multi-select entities. Now all we have to do is press edit property, relations, and I'm going to change this name to scripts, change this name to content calendar. So edit property, relation, scripts, and it'll probably show what's on the same page. It's usually how it works. But if, if you have issues with it and you're having a hard time finding it because notion searching kind of stinks sometimes, press command or control L, go to the top right and copy the link after going full page on the database and then press relation. If it's having a hard time, just make sure you paste it. Another trick too is you could name it something really fun and interesting, uh, like with multiple X's or ones at the beginning so that it looks nothing like any other database. So then press show on scripts. And then we have the ability to change the symbols here. So it looks a little bit better. So I change the logos to be scripts and maybe scripts slash outlines is a more accurate name for the database. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back in here, make the relation entity have the same logo for both that and the content calendar. So then it looks all matched up. And then from there, you have the database structure needed to create a constant calendar. If you're using ChatGPT+, please use the power of this amazing tool. Do not let it just sit there being a chatbot. It's amazing for more than just what's inside that platform. With that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. And if you want to see more quick and cool tutorials on how products like this work, make sure to check out videos like that one right there.